Hello, hello, welcome. Happy Wednesday. Welcome to Stamping A to Z. I'm Linda Gibbs. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator here in Canada. Sorry, just making sure the volume was on. <laughs> um, Stamping A to Z is an, a series that I started that basically shows you um, what products are out there and how to use them and all sorts of cool ways new ways you can use them that aren't just the usual traditional way. So I try to get creative and show you all sorts of ways that you can use things that you have at home. And it doesn't always have to be um, Stampin' Up! based product. You can apply it to whatever you have, um, but I use Stampin' Up! product. So um, I love doing these videos. I love getting creative and coming up with things for you every week. This month happens to be uh, World Watercoloring Month. So I've decided to do a few part series um, once a week on some different watercoloring techniques. I've showed some watering, ugh, watercoloring techniques before in the past. Um, some of these will be new, some of them are repeats, but not everybody sees all of the videos all of the time. So it's nice to go back and use it with new product. We also, um, July 1st was the release of our new um, July to December mini catalog, as well as for July and August, it is celebration time. So for those of you who don't know what celebration is, it is a sale that we have. It is a special catalog. This I get to show the catalogs now. It is a cute um, little catalog and it has products that you can earn for free. So you can't buy them, but you can get them for free. And there's some really awesome products in celebration this for the next two months. So um, I will be showing you some of those today. I'm going to go through and show you my favorites out of the catalog. Now that I can open the catalog last week, I did. Um, I showed you my catalog pre-order sneak peek items, but I couldn't show you the catalog. So now I get to show you the catalog, show you some of the really cool stuff in there and celebration. And while I'm doing that, I'm also gonna um, do the watercoloring techniques with some of these new products. So let's get started. Let me flip you around. Oh, sorry, have you in the clip here. Okay. If you are watching, let me know that you're watching. My iPad does not always tell me people are watching and who's watching and from where. If you're new, um, where are you watching from? I would love to hear from you. If you would like, share with your friends. Um, sorry, I'm just going to try and see if I can find the video here so I can make sure we're live. I can close this light. Okay. Oh yeah, so here's some of my water, I have proof, World Watercolor Month. I didn't know, but it's there, so we're gonna go with it. And I just wanted to remind you that July 10th is the last date that you have to um, get your hands on the July uh, paper pumpkin. If you are a paper pumpkin fan, the July host coat this month is here. All right, let's pull out the catalogs. Okay, this is the new July to December 2022 mini catalog. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Okay, so there's a really cute kit in here. Um, I don't have it, but it comes with this super cute, um, I think it's a lunch bag. Yeah, it says it's a lunch bag to put all your cards in. So it's a really cute kit. Um, let's dive over this stuff here. Then there's this sweetest Christmas sweet. This is one of the first things that I wanted to get my hands on, mostly for this one. So as you can see, this is a double set suite, so it's a huge suite. If you're ever tempted to get the whole suite, they do provide you with a code for the whole suite and the price. 
and that always includes everything that you see on this page. So it would come with both bundles, the ribbon, the sequins, the glitter paper, and the designer series paper. So just so you are aware of that, but I really wanted to get my hands on this one because of the beautiful dies that you can get. I'm a sucker for dies, what can I say? And I really like that you can put the candy cane through the tag or you can put ribbon. Um, so I do have, last week I did use the candy cane and I did, I did, I used the die, but I used it as a mask. So if you guys watched last week's, you can see how that one was made. Um, I think that's all I have for samples for that one. I don't have a lot of samples yet. Um, I'm not going to show you everything. We have to keep it a secret. No, <laughs> it's no longer a secret. If you need a catalog, you can always let me know. Um, and we can get one to you. So this is another suite. Um, it's not necessarily the suite that I wanted to point out. It's the memory, um, memories and more cards. And they have the cards that go well. So it's super easy to put together um, really fast um, large, oh my goodness, my words aren't coming to, to me, um, a large amount of cards. They come with, I think they're four, four. Mm -mm, let me see if I can, there's lots of multiples of the same ones over and over, so you can, um, you can make lots of the same cards without so here's all the beautiful cards. I, I did show these last week, so I'm not going to go through them again. But yeah, so there's those. That's what I really like about this one. Oh, and this trim, it's so pretty. I don't know if you'll be able to see it in the video and the sparkle, but it's really, really pretty. So there's that. The other thing you don't want to miss is these embossing folders. They're easy to miss, um, but I really liked the mountains. You can use that for anything. So I love the mountains, so I had to have this embossing folder. And I just happened, well, you'll see it in a bit. I did use it on one of my swap cards that I just finally got in the mail. All right, so then um, I showed you this one as well. This was one with the snowflakes and it's cool because it has pop-up snowflakes in the dies. That's another cool one. This is another one that you don't want to miss. I love anything that's with a punch. So it has this um, label punch and then it has all these sentiments. So it's, and it's not just Christmas. You've got New Year's, you've got holidays, you've got baked for you so if you're giving someone some baked goods um, this is a really good one so then, oh, this is another one that was a must-have for me um, it's just a stamp set but I love that you can it has the outline it has the fill it has um, lots and lots of possibilities Here's a couple, so this is a sample, it's from a swap. Um, this was made by Susan Schaefer's, so that you can see she just colored each letter with um, markers to get the different colors, which is kind of cool. And then this is one that I made, the jingle all the way without the outline. But yeah, it has these cute little bells and bow, it has the... Um, Christmas lights, lots of fun stuff there. And then we move on. This is another one of my favorites, the little dog. Those of you who know me, I have two dogs. I love dogs. Um, and it's a punch. It's not my dogs. I, um, I have doodles, but that's okay. As long as it's a dog, I'm happy. And then, okay, this is, <laughs> I love the Yeti. This is the swap. I don't know if I should show it because people haven't received their swaps yet, but that's okay. They're in the mail. Um, this was one of my swaps. 
that I did. So I just stamped the Yeti and did a bit of coloring, cut them out. Um, the Get Yeti to Party. I have lots of friends with parties uh, with birthdays at um, Christmas time or winter time, including my own. So that kind of got me. And here's that mountain um, embossing folder that I was talking about. So it's um, really useful mountain um, background. Now this one doesn't look like much and I pretty much missed it until I saw the celebration. So in the celebration catalog, they have made a set of dies that coordinates with the tree. So the trees can be cut out by the trees and the dog with the dog and then the lights. Um, but then on top of that, it has this cute little camper with the pieces you can add to it. And then it has the wreath. It just has so many pieces that you can um, build on for this. I just, I haven't played with this yet, but I'm so excited to play with it. So don't miss this one or you'll be sad when you get to your celebration items. Um, and then you'll want it. So then this is another one of my favorites, this storybook gnomes. Um, super cute. So this is one of the ones I'm gonna do some water coloring with today. Um, so keep your eye open for that one. And then, okay, so I missed something in here, which I'm getting to, I haven't got there yet. Um, don't miss this um, embossing kit that's back. Um, we used to carry the tray. It's been gone for a long time. They just brought it back with the embossing buddy. This paintbrush is actually, no, that's not a paintbrush. It's a brush to brush off the powder. And it's it's nice and stiff, like it's not super soft. And I've been, it's so great for taking those powders off your paper, those little stray powders. And then these awesome metal clips so you don't burn your fingers. That's another, shh, sorry. <laughs> one dog barks, they all bark. Um, so then the one thing I did miss um, that I don't want you to miss, because now this is on my list to um, get, is that there's another embossing folder here. It's a leaf um, embossing folder. And uh, it's really hard to see, which is probably why I missed it but it has the maple leaves in it. So those of you Canadians who um, love the maple leaf, that, that's a good one. Don't miss it, because that's the only place that they show it. And I was sure I checked in the back, if you don't already know, they always have like all the bundles and then they show you all the stamps, the embossing folders. And so I looked in the embossing folders or this is hybrid, I guess, and then the dies. So here's the embossing fold, and I somehow I searched here, but I missed it, so it was here. Anyways, don't miss that one. <laughs> um, this is another one of my favorites. The witches are cute, the paper is extra cute, so don't miss that paper, because as you can see, you can use it as black and white or gray, and then you can color it as well with your blends. So that is one not to be missed. Um, this is another one um, ringed with nature. It's super cool. It's a hybrid embossing folder, which means you can die cut and emboss at the same time. That one I'm excited about. And then I think that is my favorites in here. I'll show you the celebration quickly. Um, it's a much smaller catalog, so it's easier to show. Love, love, love these cute little hippos. We're gonna use these today with our water coloring. So you can get the hippos and you can get the matching dyes. They are separate that you can earn them. So if you know if you if you only spend $60, you can get one or the other. You don't have to get both. This is designer's paper that goes with the ringed with nature um, paper. 
This is cards and envelopes. There's 20 of them with the beautiful uh, soft sea foam and pool party that goes with that splendid day suite that's in this mini catalog. There's some really cute sketches. Love this paper. Um, it has silver and gold foiling through it. This amazing phrasing we're going to use today. It is awesome. I showed you the dies for the tree lot. And then there's this wonderful world stamp set and designer series paper. I am using this as well today for watercoloring. And then if you host or if you spend enough to earn, so if your order is over $375, you can earn this for free on top of all your other free stuff that you will earn with that it's just an above and then um for celebration i shouldn't forget to mention there is um an extra freebie if you join my team so to join is 135 dollars you get to choose 165 dollars worth of product it is um in alberta anyways it's tax free and it's no shipping if you are elsewhere in canada there's usually a bit of tax but no shipping um, you get this making plans collection on top of all that other stuff for free, which is, I think it's a $65, um, worth of stuff. I don't have it all. I don't know where I put, the, I started making my, my planner. So I put all the extra stuff away, but it comes with this cute stamp set and it comes with this binder and it comes with a whole bunch of fun stickers to use makes um, planning fun <laughs> it's always more fun when you have stickers and stamps to play with and make things pretty and then there's a whole bunch of dividers this is just some of them and it's got a year and a half worth of um, months so it has a monthly focus and then it's got your month so it starts in July and then you've got your weekly priorities. You've got, um, so I put enough for each week. So there's a whole pile of these that you can put as many or as little as you want. Then there's a list set and then some extra spots. And then it also comes with three of these cute little journals. One's lined, one's squared, and one's plain, I think. So yeah, it comes with lots of fun stuff and that's just a little extra for free for joining um, during celebration. Okay, let's get started with our watercoloring. First up, sorry, let me move all these things out of the way that I pulled out. All right, um, first up, I'm going to do a full watercolor technique. So technically, I guess I'm not watercoloring, um, but it's gonna look like watercoloring. So instead of using the Fluid 100 watercolor paper, I'm using the shimmery um, paper. So it's a little bit more forgiving than basic white in terms of water, um, but it's not like watercolor paper. You wouldn't wanna soak it or anything. So then I'm going to take my um, stamp, and since it has stems, I don't want my stems to be blue, which I'm making, I guess it's purpley blue. I'm using Orchid Oasis, which is one of our new in-color um, colors, and then I'm using Mossy Meadow as the stem color, and the reason I chose these colors kind of came off of the designer series paper that comes with this which is one of the free celebration items and I just kind of took my color um, my colors off of the paper because I was going to use a piece of paper so here there's a orchid oasis there's mossy meadow there's also starry sky and Sahara sand so I'm using Sahara sand as my background so which you will see in a bit. So I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to color my stems in green. And you're probably like, um, you're not watercoloring, you're stamping. 
Yes, I am. And this is why it is full watercoloring. You will see, I will pull out the water painters in as soon as I'm done this. So this is yet another technique where you can put multiple colors down on one stamp. And you'll probably, you're probably thinking to yourself, well, it's going to be dry by the time you go to stamp it, especially the green because it's taking me so long. Um, so the term, the coined term to refresh your ink and get it to stamp again is to huff on it. So you just want to And then you can, if you can see that on camera, the moisture from your breath um, will reactivate it and get it moist enough to stamp. And I'm just gonna, looks like I kind of missed, <laughs> missed a spot. But the nice thing is, now that I'm gonna come in and watercolor it, you won't even notice. And I set my watercolors, my water painters aside and them out. Okay, so I like to use my chamois when I'm watercoloring because it soaks up that water really nicely for me. And you can see these stamps are really distinctive stamps. It kind of already looks like it's um, shaded. But to go one step further, and you can, it softens it, but it also, if you look really close, you can see the dots um, from the digital um, I guess rendering to make it distinctive. So by taking your water painter and coming in, and so what I usually try to do is I try and drag the colors from the lighter to the darker, just so you're not making that light spot too dark. And you're keeping kind of with the, the way that the picture is done. You want to keep it the light spots light and the dark spots dark, I guess. See, then I can kind of fill that in and it just kind of smooths everything out. So if you notice this one compared to this one, this one is much smoother, but it still has the variation in color. So then we can come in and do that here as well. I'm not going to bore you by doing Okay, so there's that. It's not finished, but I'll show you the finished. <laughs> so here's both of them all water colored. And like I said, I pulled the designer series paper that came with the set. The You've Got This is from, because it doesn't have a sentiment, it came from the amazing phrasing that is, that's also in the celebration catalog. And then I just used the, um, stitched greenery dye to make this background. And like I said, I just pulled the colors um, from the designer series paper. So I didn't even have to come up with the color combination on my own, but it's, it's really pretty. And then I just added some pearls. So there's your first water coloring technique. And this is super easy and quick and fun to do. All right, let's set these aside. Uh, I'm not sure I need that again. I don't remember. Okay, this is a fun one. 
Um, where did I put my... Okay, next we're going to use, I promised we'd use the Hippest Hippos from, again, the Celebration Catalog. So it's got the stamp set, which is a cling stamp set, the rubber, and then um, it's got the dies that match. And for this one, I'm going to be doing, basically it's a, so I'm kind of cheating today. I'm doing a cheater color wash, not um, a straight on color wash using the paintbrush. Um, but I'm gonna cheat. Now, I didn't have the exact rectangle shape that I wanted. So I'm just gonna put mask part of my paper so that it then makes it ah, as though it's um, a rectangle. So I'm gonna take this clear acrylic block and I'm going to use it as my wash background. Um, how am I gonna do that? So as you can see, I wanted the rectangle and this is too long. So that's why I put the mask. So then all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some color. So you've got some options on ways to add color to your block. If you don't have reinkers, you can just take you could take markers and then you can you could color on with your marker and then you can take your brush and uh, find my brush and I'm just gonna take a little glass of water so you could take and then just wet your um, your marker color um, you can use the reinkers you can use your ink pads um, you really can do it however you want. I'm just going to use reinkers here. I'm only using one drop of the starry sky just because it's so dark. And then I'll use two of the balmy blue and probably two of the highland heather. It's one of our lighter purples. And then, like I said, you could spray it with water if you want to use a spritzer. It gives it a little bit more movement. This one I'm just going to kind of um, put, add some water to my brush. And I'm just going to kind of smush it around. But um, I kind of want to wipe off some of that water um, before getting the next one. So if you've got the amount of color that you want, this is kind of the tricky part. Um, if you have too much water, it kind of drips as you flip it over. So just be ready. <laughs> and one, two, three, go. And I'm gonna put it down. So you can see I have some dry spots, but that's okay. Because a watercolor wash isn't supposed to be perfect. And then I'm just going to grab the tissue for when I pick it up because you'll probably have a spot with more ink than you would like. So this wasn't too bad. Sometimes it's worse. There we go. And I'll just wipe my block. Let's get that all over the place. As you can see, this kind of watercoloring is a little messier. And I'm gonna take off my mask. So if you only bring the color to there, you could technically put it down, but it might run down some more. And I still don't, you still have kind of a non straight edge, so it's nice. So there's your watercolor background. And then I just let it dry. You can use a heat gun if you're in a hurry. And then I stamped that cute little hippo and I just used the blends 
to um, color her. And then there's all these cute little pieces in the dies. Um, there's umbrellas, hearts, flowers. There's a boat. I'm not sure what if this is a bucket. Um, there's like a water piece, snorkel, <laughs> snorkel gear. There's all sorts of stuff. Um, so I just took the umbrella and I used the the new uh, glitter paper that has the in colors. It's the yeah, and it's just kind of in a. Oh my gosh, I can't come up with the word. Um, ombre. <laughs> well, that's what I'm like, umbra? No, that's not right. So yeah, so that's just a cool way of doing a watercolor wash, but kind of an uncontrolled watercolor wash. But yeah, so it'll be different every time. And I love these colors. You guys love these colors? Okay, so and this was Orchid Oasis and Balmy Blue that I oh no starry sky this is orchid oasis though but starry sky is what I used um on the background okay so this last one I kind of rushed through the first two because the last one takes quite a bit longer um so this one is basically true well, not quite true watercoloring, but as close to watercoloring, I guess, with stamping as you get. Um, I am not a watercolor. I do not claim to be a watercolor. So um, I guess if I can do it, you can do it. Um, also, also to say that I don't absolutely love my picture. But that is, um, that's part of the fun of it is just practicing. Like I want to, I want to get better at it and I want to work on it. But anyways, you, and the nice thing with this watercoloring technique is you can, whenever you're using the water, so this is the Fluid 100 watercolor paper. It's quite thick and it's very forgiving with water. So you could do many, many layers of, um, color and, um, it's very forgiving that way. So if you're not happy with your look, you can keep going over and over. So this one is called No Line uh, Water Coloring. And I'm using the Kindest Gnomes um, for this No Line because I really liked the mushroom. Um, and then I was kind of, like I said, I'm not the best watercolor. So I, I really didn't know kind of how to color things. So I decided to pull out the designer series paper and try and, so there's this, um, these mushrooms here. So I kind of took my coloring from, obviously these are artists that make this paper for Stampin' Up. So I figure if I kind of use this as my, um, starting point then it should be okay so um this is what i used to try and do my wash so you can see there's no lines on this this was hand drawn and then so the idea of what we're doing is that ours is going to look like it wasn't stamped once we've done our watercoloring so um i'm using my stamparatus because i want very a very light print of the stamp so i'm going to stamp it off a few times before actually stamping it on here the thing is is if it gets so light that you can't see it you might want to stamp it again and so that way if it's on the stamp radis you could stamp it again for a second in time to kind of even it out if you've missed a spot so that was kind of my reasoning for that um i'll just do well i'll stamp both um, what I was going to do, but I won't, I'm not going to watercolor the whole thing, um, cause it would take way too long. So I'm, you, you just want to take a lighter color and something that you're probably, something close to what you're going to use in your coloring. So here my mushroom.
Mushroom base is going to be brown, so I took the hair as that, even though I'm using red on top. If it's light enough, you won't see it um, once you do your watercoloring. So I'm going to stamp it up well, but then I'm going to take a piece of paper and I'm going to stamp it off once. And then I like to turn it so that I can see how much ink is still coming off. Like I think I might want to do it again. I was doing three before, but I think I'll do four. So that's three. And now this is the fourth one. So you can see this is a little bit darker than I would like. This is a little bit lighter than I would like, but I can still see it, but I'm still gonna just put a little bit more. And then I'm going to stamp it off. Let's see how much ink is on here. And then I'm just going to press where I wanted that bit of extra ink. There we go. So now I can see it a little bit better. Um, so I'm happy with that. Then instead of masking, I could... I could have um, done a cutout of the gnome because there is, well, you could fussy cut it or you can um, cut it using the dies. There, we, You can use our new masking paper that works really well. But because we're watercoloring, um, I'm just gonna hide the overlap when I watercolor. I just won't watercolor the mushroom um, behind the gnome. So again, um, my first one, I used the Sahara Sand, but I ended up doing him in blue. And I think I'm going to do, use the blue because I had to work hard to get rid of the lines. Not that I didn't, you'll see, I'll show you. Not that I didn't get rid of the lines, but I'm just gonna, um, we'll just try it out and see. So again, we will Stamp our dude down once, maybe twice, and oh, that's really light. But I can see him, so that's okay. Can you? I don't know. Can you see that in the? If I bring it up closer, you can see you have a very faint but distinctive um, lines that you can use to do your watercoloring. So that's kind of what you want. You want to be able to see so that you can do your coloring, but you want um, you don't want to see those lines when you're done, I guess is the idea. So let's take, so I'm going to use the sweet sorbet as the red on the top um, of my mushroom. And I'll just show you with the top of the mushroom because I don't want to, this could go on forever if I uh, decided to do the whole thing, but let's just. So our water painters come with three brushes. It has the wide brush, which you saw me use for the background. It's great for um, background washes. It comes with a medium sized brush. So if you're filling in a larger area, it's great for that. And then we have the fine brush, which is good for um, more, and even like to start with your lines, I prefer to use fine brush probably because I'm not a very experienced watercolor. I don't have a lot of confidence with staying in the line. So as you can see as I start you can see the line and you're gonna see this darker part for a while and that's okay because um, watercoloring involves many many layers um, over time so you just want to kind of go darker 
on here. If you don't want to use your lid as a palette, you can take So you can do it right away or you could do everything light and then put in your dark lines on top as another layer. But for me, this is just helping me kind of keep my lines as I'm losing um, my stamped lines. So then it helps me keep things um, more in check. So I could just switch to this brush and you just give it a squeeze and the water comes out. Let's me fill that. Okay, then we'll give our underside lashes as well. And then if I pull in my paper here, so I'm pretty dependent on <laughs> other artists because um, I'm not good at shading and knowing. So I'm gonna, I'm just kind of watching there to see. I kind of did some, some veining and some darker around the, around that window here so we're just gonna make that a bit darker like that and then here we've got some darker hear my dog snoring. It must be very exciting. So exciting. So right here it's hard to lose that line underneath. I probably need to do um, some more layers 
feeling at all, just to try and kind of get it to bleed out. Or what I can do is add in some red red lines to my there we go okay I think that's probably pretty good for that so then for the windows you can just take some only blue make it look like window panes You don't want to, um, you don't want to go over the red too much because it'll start pulling it in. But you can touch the lines for sure. There already, I like this mushroom better than the first one. That I did, but that's the thing. The more you do, the better, uh, the better you get at it. Just like anything. So then, I, the only other thing I wanted to do was add these dots because I wanted to show you how to do that. Um, so for that, you need your Whisper White uh, pigment ink, and I, I'm pretty sure it washes off fine, but it takes a lot of work to wash it off of the aqua painter. So either use just an old brush or I have an old aqua painter these are the old old ones and you can see it's kind of got white on it and I think if you don't clean it it does get kind of gummy but you can see it already it still has white on it and I find it's really hard to fully get the white off so this is my designated um, white brush and it's really hard to see if it's on your lid you could use um, if you don't want to get water into the ink pad you can use your ink refill and just put it on a There, and then you have your your white mushroom dots. So I mean, not as good as the artist's um, watercoloring, but not too bad. And it's nice to have that um, the lines to follow, so you have some idea of what you're doing if you're not. Um, an artist who draws um, like me it's nice to have that so that's the no line coloring here's the finished card so here I just came in with some browns 
I used Early Espresso and Soft Suede um, to make the mushroom stem and door. Um, I used Balmy Blue. I ended up putting some white into here and I'm kind of regretting it. I could go over it again with some blue. Um, for the nose and the hands, I used Petal Pink, which made for not bad um, skin color. You could use any of the, excuse me, any of the browns. And then I just stamped it and then I watercolored some Pear Pizzazz and Balmy Blue in the background. My gnome has some work, definitely. I will try and do better on this gnome, but um, yeah. So that's the no line watercoloring. So hopefully if you guys play with it and do some no line watercoloring, uh, tag me or post it in the comments. I would love to see it. Hopefully you enjoyed these watercoloring techniques. There's many, many more. So I will pull out some more new product and more watercoloring techniques next week. Um, hopefully you guys all had a long, nice long weekend last weekend and great summer holidays and we will hopefully see you next week. Bye.